Thank you, Major General, not just for your help today, but for your many years of exceptional service marked by so many firsts. The first Canadian woman to command an RCAF wing, the first to command a major Canadian Armed Forces base, and most recently the first to serve as Deputy Commander of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Thanks to your leadership, and I'm going to borrow your own words here, I can confidently say that someday there won't just be firsts, there will be sixths and sevenths and eighths. You truly are an awesome woman with rank. We will miss you in your retirement, but there can be no doubt that it has been extremely well earned. Thank you. Merci. And thank you and welcome to all of you here today. Welcome to Vancouver, a place I truly do consider a second home. You know, for most Canadians, peacekeeping has become rooted in a kind of nostalgia. Canada was a great peacekeeping nation once, so we should try to do that again today. But I'd like to spend my time with you instead focusing not on where we've been, or even where we are now, but on where we are going. By looking at the very real challenges that modern peace operations face, and at how we, and in particular Canada, can best respond. Les opérations de la paix sont importantes pour nous non seulement parce qu'elles nous permettent d'aider des millions de personnes vulnérables touchées par des conflits, mais parce qu'un monde plus pacifique est aussi un monde plus sûr pour les Canadiens. Mais, pour dire la vérité, les choses ont changé au cours des 70 années qui se sont écoulées depuis que le Canada a contribué à mettre sur pied la première opération de maintien de la paix en réponse à la crise du canal du Suez. À l'époque, les opérations de paix consistaient littéralement à assurer le maintien de la paix à se tenir entre deux États en guerre, à contribuer à la mise en, en œuvre d'un accord. Well, times have changed. Now, all too often, there is no peace to keep. The conflicts we face today are intractable, more dangerous, and more complex. Modern peace operations take place in a context that transcends borders and includes a challenging range of actors. Fragile and failing states, militia groups, non-state actors, organized criminals, and now, of course, terrorists. And the sad truth is that, as often as not, UN peace operations are now, in themselves, targets. At the same time, we are asking peace operations to do more. Not only to deal with violence when it erupts, but to respond to the entire life cycle of conflict, preventing its outbreak, supporting complicated peace processes, and to helping people rebuild their lives when conflict ends. Peace operations also serve as the first and sometimes the only line of protection for vulnerable people facing extreme violence and persecution, all in the most difficult environments. That is the reality of modern peace operations. Given that reality, we need to try new things. We can't turn to the same solutions we've always tried and expect new results. L'autre réalité, comme tous ceux qui sont ici dans la salle le savent, est que les opérations de paix de l'ONU n'arrivent pas toujours à répondre aux grandes attentes que nous avons. Protéger les plus vulnérables, rebâtir des États en déroute, ce sont des tâches monumentales. Nous ne parvenons pas à protéger les droits de la personne et les vies humaines de façon assez efficace et, Dans les pires cas, il faut l'avouer, nous contribuons même à empirer ces problèmes. Lorsque ceux à qui nous avons confié la tâche de protéger deviennent les exploiteurs, 
Lorsque ceux que nous avons déployés dans le monde pour contribuer à bâtir la paix perpétuent plutôt des agressions, nous avons échoué. We can and we must do better. Today's mandates are difficult and they are complex. We ask a lot of the women and men who serve in our peace operations and we don't give them the tools they need to succeed. These are the challenges we're up against. And Canada has been thinking hard about how we can best respond. I'm going to be really straight with you here. 600 Canadian Armed Forces personnel is significant for Canada as a commitment. But let's remember that there are close to 100,000 peacekeepers deployed around the world. So we have to focus on how Canada can best help. What we will do is step up and make the contributions we are uniquely able to provide. We know how to work with other countries and other partners to make peace happen. We have innovative ideas to share, and more importantly, we're willing to put those new ideas into practice. We're also home to the kinds of concrete capabilities that UN peace operations need. We can make a difference by matching what we do best with what UN peace operations need most. And we'll make that difference in four ways. First, by signing on to the Vancouver Principles, we are committing to take real and immediate steps towards ending the recruitment and use of child soldiers in the context of UN peace operations. I am pleased to share that more than 53 countries have already joined us in this commitment. En vertu de ces principes, si un enfant fait face à un soldat sur un champ de bataille, nous avons déjà échoué. Dès le départ, nous devons faire plus pour éviter que cela ne se produise. Cela exige une surveillance, un signalement et une réaction plus efficace lorsque nous sommes confrontés aux signes précoces qui indiquent que des enfants vulnérables pourraient avoir été recrutés et contraints à la violence. Et cela veut dire que chaque mission doit posséder le savoir-faire nécessaire pour négocier la libération, le rétablissement et la réhabilitation d'enfants soldats. Ensemble, nous pouvons faire en sorte que les enfants restent des enfants et ne deviennent pas des armes de guerre. But at the same time, we need our soldiers in the field to be prepared. Picture it for a moment. You're a peacekeeper on patrol, and you're suddenly confronted with a wide-eyed seven-year-old pointing an AK-47 at you and shouting. First of all, we've already failed. What should have been done in the past hours, weeks, or months before to prevent this moment from happening? And In the moment, what do you do? How do you protect the women and men with you? How do you take action? Do you take action? What do you do in this situation? Operational. And finally, how do you deal with the after effects? the nightmares that will surely come from whatever impo impossible choice you made or didn't make in that split second you had to decide. These are the questions that Romeo Dallaire has spent the last decades trying to answer and leading on. Well, we, the signatories to the principles, will give our people the training they need so that they can understand the unique risks and dangers the child soldiers pose. We will give them guidance on how to best avoid confronting children, but also the rules of engagement so that they can protect themselves and others. 
and we will make sure that they get that training before they deploy on any peace operation. Canada has some experience with this. Au mois de mars, les forces armées canadiennes ont rendu public une doctrine militaire officielle concernant les enfants soldats. Nous avons adopté cette mesure parce que nous savons qu'un engagement qui consiste à mettre fin au recrutement et à l'utilisation d'enfants soldats est aussi un engagement à l'égard de nos propres citoyens. C'est impossible de faire face à un enfant en contexte de guerre sans être changé à jamais. Those who serve in UN peace operations are strong and courageous and capable but they are also human, and they need to know that we'll have their back. These Vancouver principles ensure that we will give them the mental health support they need as they recover and heal from all the wounds of war, including the ones we can't see. These are difficult and painful challenges, and no one knows this better or has worked harder to drive this agenda forward than General Dallaire. For his tireless efforts in bringing forward the Vancouver Principles and for his ongoing work to improve the lives of children and peace workers around the world, we owe him a tremendous debt. Romeo, mon général, thank you for all you have done and continue to do. Merci. Deuxièmement, le Canada prendra la responsabilité de veiller à ce que les femmes jouent un plus grand rôle dans les opérations de la paix. Les faits sont les suivants. Lorsque les femmes et les filles participent au processus de paix, la paix est plus durable. La participation des femmes au processus de paix augmente de 35 la probabilité qu'un accord de paix dure pendant au moins 15 ans. Women bring a unique and valuable perspective to conflict resolution. They look beyond the interests of warring parties. They bring the wider community to the table, and they focus on root causes. Including women and girls in peace operations is a smart, practical pathway to lasting peace. It is also a necessary step in addressing a truly global problem. Approximately one in three women worldwide have experienced physical or sexual violence. Even worse, gender-based violence increases significantly in conflict settings. But we also know that both women and men are more likely to report incidents of violence to women officers. Women are more likely to understand the risks and dangers that all members of a community face. And we can expect women peacekeepers to be a powerful force for the elimination of sexual exploitation and abuse. This is why so many of us here today are working hard to increase the participation of women in United Nations peace operations. Back in 2015, the Security Council set some ambitious targets on that front. It wanted to double the number of women in military and police peacekeeping contingents by 2020. Unfortunately, at the current rate, it would take another 37 years to achieve the goal we originally hoped to reach in five. We must do better. That is why, as a second priority, Canada intends to launch the ELSI Initiative on Women in Peace Operations. Named after World War II a Canadian engineer and women's rights pioneer Elsie McGill, Canada will use the ELSI Initiative as an opportunity to work with the United Nations, other member states, and troop-contributing countries to develop and test new ways to recruit, train and promote more women in UN peace operations, including in senior and leadership positions. For our part, 
Canada is working hard to increase the number of women who serve in our armed forces, and we are equally committed to increasing the number of women we deploy as a part of UN peace operations. Increasing the numbers and qualification of women deployed in UN peace operations won't happen overnight, because for many women, there are significant obstacles to their participation, including institutional and attitudinal barriers in the countries where peace operations take place. But we are confident that a lot can happen a lot faster with the kind of specialized technical assistance Canada is prepared to provide. It can also happen a lot faster if we provide additional resources. Two years ago, the Security Council and several high-profiled UN reviews called for the creation of a fund to help encourage the deployment of more women to peace operations. Canada is prepared to take the first step. We will make a lead contribution of $15 million to help get the ELSI initiative up and running. Troisièmement, le Canada cherchera également plus d'occasions de partager ses capacités de formation, de capacité et de calibre mondial. Nous possédons le savoir-faire dont d'autres ont besoin. C'est un savoir-faire que nous avons durement acquis en Afghanistan et en Irak, deux des environnements opérationnels les plus difficiles. Là-bas, Nous avons été aux côtés de nos partenaires des autres nations qui cherchaient à rebâtir leur pays. Those difficult experiences challenged us and proved that Canadian training leads to greater professionalism and effectiveness. We will continue to offer training assistance to meet ongoing UN needs. This would include small, mobile training teams offering specialized training in the field, with training tailored to situational needs, from medical and communications training to sexual and gender-based violence investigation and counter-IED training. We will also establish a Canadian training and advisory team. This team would help to train peace operations personnel from another country, work with them to improve skills and professionalism, and provide them with the equipment they need to train safely and properly. Then, if circumstances warrant it, Canadian trainers could accompany those same personnel during a deployment to help track progress and ensure greater success. By working more closely with these units, by being a part of their development from initial training to actual deployment, we can help build broader capacity for UN peace operations and deliver better results for everyone. And that brings us to the fourth part of Canada's commitment, our commitment to the Smart Pledge approach. The way things work now, a mission is identified and then the call goes out to see who can help and how and when. But too often, mission planners are left with a gap between the significant commitments countries are willing to make and what's actually needed in conflict zones around the world. Smart pledges will help to close that gap. By better aligning what is offered with what is needed, by identifying up front when and how we can help, and by making sure that we get the right equipment and expertise into the right places at the right times, we can collectively ensure that every UN mission has what it needs to succeed from beginning to end. Il s'agit d'une nouvelle approche, une approche innovatrice. Le Canada est prêt à montrer la voie à suivre. Grâce à nos capacités, à notre savoir-faire spécialisé, nous pouvons jouer un rôle de premier plan dans le but d'accroître l'efficacité des missions sur le terrain, d'appuyer les processus de paix et de consolidation de la paix après les conflits et d'améliorer la formation offerte à d'autres pays participants. Nous pouvons également améliorer la gestion globale des opérations de la paix en rehaussant la capacité des hauts dirigeants de l'ONU à fournir un leadership et une orientation à partir des quartiers généraux. These are core capabilities that UN missions need to succeed that go right to the heart 
of effective peace operations. As you know, Canada has pledged to make available up to 600 Canadian Armed Forces personnel for possible deployment to a variety of UN peace operations, and we are fulfilling that commitment over time through a series of smart pledges. This is the best way for Canada to help, and it offers the greatest chance of success. As one of Canada's first commitments, we've entered into negotiations with the United Nations and plan to contribute a much-needed tactical airlift to be located at the United Nations Regional Service Centre in Entebbe, Uganda. There, we will play a critical role in helping to get what is needed to where it's needed. Un appareil C-130 du Canada sera déployé avec du personnel de soutien et de protection de la force pour une période pouvant atteindre une année afin de fournir aux opérations de paix de l'ONU en Afrique ce dont elles ont besoin pour accomplir leur travail, parfois dans les conditions les plus difficiles qui soient. Que nous soyons appelés à transformer des effectifs, des matériaux de construction ou des fournitures médicales, ce déploiement apportera un soutien très nécessaire aux missions dans une région du monde où, en, région, en raison de l'étendue des conflits, la logistique et les livraisons de matériel sont un défi constant. We are offering, as a smart pledge, a quick reaction force comprised of a company of elite personnel and accompanying equipment capable of responding rapidly to threats such as those against UN positions and observation posts. And to respond to the chronic shortage of helicopter detachments, we're offering up to two aviation task forces as smart pledges as well. These contributions of armed and utility helicopters, along with support and security personnel, will help support troop transport, medical evacuation, and other logistical needs. We are making all these pledges today because we believe in the United Nations and we believe in peacekeeping. La nature des conflits a changé. Les besoins des opérations de paix aussi. Les offres discrètes et les engagements à la pièce nous ont menés jusqu'ici, mais des changements réels, majeurs et profonds seront impossibles sans qu'un véritable changement institutionnel soit apporté. Canada is prepared to help lead that charge. To rethink how we engage, not just where we engage to close the institutional gaps that prevent us from being even more effective agents of peace in a world that sorely needs it. That's how we'll protect the world's children, empower women and girls, and build a more peaceful and a more prosperous world. As Lester Pearson, and we celebrate 60 years since winning the Nobel Peace Prize, a medal that is actually on display here today. As he once said, all of, our dreams, of all our dreams today, there is none more important or so hard to realize than that of peace in the world. May we never lose our faith in it or our resolve to do everything that can be done to convert it one day into reality. Modern peace operations bring with them some of the biggest challenges, the toughest decisions, and the most heartbreaking consequences of anything we do. But our commitment to the effort endures, because we believe in peacekeeping. We have seen its power to transform, and we know that there is no greater gift that we can leave our children and grandchildren than true and lasting peace. So let's be bold. Let us innovate. Let us try new things. Let us be the change we need to build a more peaceful world together. Merci beaucoup.